So like I'll be first explaining like uh what like uh a Tumblr transfer effect is that you know uh so Wave and DDSP that's been mentioned before are both like the neural networks that perform Tumblr transfer and uh so I would like to first explain what neural Tumblr transfer is and then I'll like uh I'll just go over the collab notebook for Wave and DDSP to give you an idea of how you can train your own Tumblr transfer models. I mean, it doesn't have to be a collab notebook. We we also have like scripts for training models. If that's like your yeah, your go to stuff. And uh, also, I'll be showing you briefly like what you should look out for when you're trying to make new neural audio effect like uh, architectures. Like that's not very with DDSP. Like if you have your own model that processes audio and outputs audio. Uh, how you can make that compatible to like a real time audio effect. Right. So, uh, so basically, a Tumblr transfer effect is uh, an effect that converts some piece of music into another that of an, another instrument or a timbre. So, like, an obvious question would be to like, why not just uh, transcribe the music and then play that? uh score with a different instrument but the difference is that like so we can imagine sort of violins but played like a flute not just not just the same score but like you know there's some uh, uh there's some styles from the original violin that's carried over to the flute the produced flute sound and it doesn't sound exactly like a flute sound that you would but there's some uh weird effects that uh, you might find interesting and also there's like you can transfer to uh unplayable like non-instrument sound sources like uh uh well like factory sounds or bike exhaust or something like that and also oh well, yeah there's some model imperfections but it, it's it's all good for like creative sound design yeah so recently there's been some buzz about uh this these sort of effects uh, the first is uh, Rave by uh, Kayon, uh, Antoine Kayon and like uh, Philip Essling at uh, IRCOM. Uh, so basically, uh, Rave is like a wall waveform encoder encoder. I'll go into more detail later. And DDSP, I, it uses a bit more uh, musical knowledge to uh, do the auto encoding. So, well, this, here's an example of a uh, time transfer effect. Uh, very basic. Oh wait, no. Let me just uh, right. Okay. Uh, let me do that again. So there's a piano. And here's a violin. So well, yeah. It keeps some of the performance sort of information and converts that into that of a violin. So what 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 is an autoencoder? Uh, some of you might not be familiar with that, but let me just briefly explain that. Uh, it's a neural network that compresses and reconstructs the input audio. So basically, uh, the encoder sort of analyzes the input audio, and then the decoder generates the output audio uh, based on like what the encoder analyzed. This and this what what the encoder analyzed is basically called a latent variable. Uh, it's it's basically a comp a compact representation of the data uh yes and it, it's not it might be like stuff like a uh, pitch or loudness or something like that but it's very vague and it can convey a lot of information besides that as well yeah see so uh yeah so during training uh the uh, model is trying train to like construct reconstruct a certain sound say if you uh try to uh, train the model on violin sounds then the input audio will be violin and the output audio should be the same violin sounds and then like the autoencoder will learn like information about the music like uh, pitch and loudness and then during inference you can you can basically feed it any sound and uh the encoder will try to like make sense of what what it was fed and uh and output like a latent variable and then the decoder 
uh, the decoder only knows how to like reconstruct violin sounds. So it's not going to create the piano sound, but it's it's going to like transform that into a violin sound. And thus, like you can do this sort of timbre transfer effect using autoencoders. Right. So, uh, yeah. So let me go into uh, a bit of the details about Rave. So Rave was like uh, introduced uh, well, at the end of last year, maybe or the beginning of this year. I don't know, but uh, it's basically a compilation-based autoencoder that processes raw waveform. Uh, but it has a lot of uh, techniques to that makes it work in real time because. Generally, uh, stuff like a uh, WaveNet or a uh, WaveNet or uh, sample RNN, they are kind of slow and they don't really work in real time. But uh, Wave uses uh, uh, techniques like uh, subband coding and etc. to uh, uh, that really uh, just makes the computation a bit better. Yeah. And the pros of Wave is that it can model any audio. Like it doesn't have to be like a, a clean performance or anything. You can feed it like an entire song, and it, and it would try to like reconstruct that entire song. The cons are that uh, it's a bit expensive to train uh, compared to other uh, like stuff like DDSP. Uh, it says two to three days, but it might take more, maybe five days, depending on the GPU. And uh, yeah, and you you have to prepare like a large training data set. This is uh, two to three hours, but uh, the more the better generally, yeah. So yeah, let me just go into the details about uh, creating a wave model for Newtone. Uh, what, the first option is to uh, train locally. Uh, you, you'd need like at least uh, six gigabytes of RAM uh, VRAM uh, with a G GPU with a six gigabytes of VRAM. So basically, I think the mo most of the new GPUs are fine. Uh, they they would have to be NVIDIA though. Yes, and also another option is to use the Google Colab. Uh, that way you don't need a hardware. But uh, since like Colab has some restrictions, uh, if you want to train like multiple models in a month. You might need to uh, upgrade to Colab Pro or Pro Plus. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll go over how you can use a uh, Wave Colab notebook. So uh, you have to first prepare the training data and then upload that data into the Google Drive, and then you can run the cells in the notebook. So let me just. Uh, Open the notebook. Right. So, uh, right. So, uh, well, this is the collab notebook. Um, I think like mo a lot of the sales about the uh, new tone export stuff is uh same as Bogdan's, and uh, uh, the description is all there so that you can like uh train your own models. Like, oh, wait, sorry. Let me just clean my... <laughs> okay, ah, okay. Right, so you want to first uh, check the GPU that you have. Uh, yeah. And call up takes some time. And uh, yeah, we got like a Tesla T4, which is like, it's usually what you get with the free tires of our uh, collab not not too good and then you can like uh, uh mount the google drive to uh load the training data and then like uh, you can configure the settings here so training name is just basically what you want to call your uh training run and the input data set, you have to uh, point to the input data set, like from the file browser. Uh, so I, uh, all the 
stuff on the Google Drive would be like mounted under uh, content drive, my, my, my drive. And uh, yeah, also the sampling rate field, uh, this would control like uh, what, your, what your model operates in, in terms of sample rate. Uh, by default, I think Newton, I mean, Newton is compatible with like all, all sampling rates basically. And uh, if your DAW is running at a different sampling rate, then the Newton would uh, automatically resample to that uh, sampling rate. So you don't have to worry about it. But uh, uh, I mean, that's resampling the better. So yeah, generally like 48,000 or 44.1 thousand is good. And yeah, there's some uh, other parameters, but uh, multiband number, size, uh, these are all like uh, rave model details. So like setting uh, size to uh, large would make it make the model a bit big. And uh, generally, you want to use a uh, default or small because uh, large kind of uh, has a lot of overhead, and uh, your laptop might not be able to handle that. Like when you're running in real time. Yeah, and uh, yeah, also there's this non-latency mode. Uh, uh, checking this off would make the convolutions uh, non-causal. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll go into detail about uh, convolutions later, but uh, basically uh, non-causal convolutions adds a lot of latency and you might not want that like it's basically like a half a second or something if you have like this checked off and also there's a yeah so first you have to uh, resample the data set to like the sampling rate of your model and then you can uh, start the tensor board uh, i can't show that like today but uh uh yeah t tensor board uh yeah, I'll I'll explain it a bit later. Yeah, and then there's like the cell about the training, the that does all the training, and this is like you're going to spend like ninety nine point nine percent of your time on this cell because uh this cell isn't going to end for like uh a couple of days, and also since since like Colab has uh limitations on of uh, like how much time you can run your models consecutively you're going to have to uh come back to this and like resume it ag again and again but yeah eventually your model will be ready and then you can like uh do the export to uh newton you have to uh, first uh export the torch script and then like uh there's some wrapper details that uh it's basically the same as Bogdan's uh tutorial uh yeah there's some uh parameters to edit the uh, latent variable of the ray model and yeah and you can see like how these uh stuff like chaos is used uh over here in uh yeah so what this chaos parameter controls how much uh latent noise is applied to the wave latent variable. Yeah, and then uh, we just use the wrapper and uh, upload the model, and then yeah, save the model, and then you, yeah, then you can like download from the Google Drive. So yeah, um, I think it should be pretty straightforward. But like, if you have any problems with the uh, wave collab, uh, you can ask in the Discord or or like here in the chat maybe if you've already used it right so uh i think like the most difficult part of like training a wave model is uh how to prepare your training data i mean ideally you're going to want like more than two or three hours of uh like recording of uh clean sounds by clean, I mean like there's no background noises, and uh, there's there's not too much mix of like weird instruments. But uh, yeah, 
So example is like uh, this wave drum kit model. Uh, well, okay, so this is Maestro data set, but it's not uh, Maestro data set. I think uh, it was some other Google data set, but yeah. Yeah, it was like a drum performance data set and it was very big. So we just uh, run it, ran it through Ray model and it, and yeah, that we makes a really good drum model. So yeah, recording environment should be ideally uniform. And uh, so if you have too much like variety in the data set, as in like too much uh, diverse timbre, I mean, too little produces like the same sound for any input. So uh, let me just uh, show some examples of that. So here's like uh, input sound. Yeah, that's just some song. And then if you run it through the rave drum kit model, Yeah, it sounds based a bit like the song and but completely just drums. And then uh so we trained the bagpipe model, but uh the bagpipe performance was a bit too much uh droney and kind of the samey throughout. And this is how how it turned out. So yeah, it, it it does sound like a bagpipe and in a way that's good, but uh, it doesn't really reflect the input. So it's not very useful as an audio effect in that sense. And uh, what happens if you have too much variety in the data set, it kind of produces mu muddy sounds. That's like a mix of many different sounds. So uh, we trained it on like uh, lots of jump breaks with like lots of timbre. kind of interesting but uh not really not really what we were going for in terms of like drum break model yeah so and also i want to add that pre-processing your data is very important uh gain normalization might be good if, you, if your model is like i mean if your data set is a lot of quiet sounds uh since the model hasn't seen like any loud sounds during training, when the model is fed loud sounds, it might behave like very er erratically and uh, produce like a well, well, clip. It would clip a lot. And also data augmentation is important as well. Uh, one example of that we did is a uh, rape aiming model. Uh, I, uh, yeah, when, I, when training that model, I had to, uh, randomize the timing and the tempo and the game randomization because this, it, there's only one aim and break and we have to squeeze, squeeze that out somehow. Yeah. So, um, maybe a pitch, random pitch shifts might be good as well. yeah that's about it for the training data but uh and there's some uh tips uh or troubleshooting about rave training yeah and uh if the model like works for some the model might work for some sounds but not others like if you're testing on one sound and it doesn't work like as in like input sounds like yeah sorry this is a bit confusing but uh model works for some input sounds but not others is like that's a very common thing to happen for example like if you train a model on like marimba sounds then it, it might perform poorly against like uh really high pitch sounds or really low pitch sounds because the the pitch range of the original data is limited and and if you feed it like sounds that are kind of like out of the field for the training data and uh, that might uh, affect the uh, output performance. And also it's helpful to like uh, look at the TensorBoard results. Uh, so tens there's a TensorBoard cell in the uh, Google Colab. 
that we we just showed uh yeah so if your training is running and uh you run this cell uh you're going to get uh i mean no you have to run the cell and then run the training but uh yeah and then you have to uh, refresh the tensorboard uh it should be pretty straightforward but yeah so tensorboard gives you uh, basically a visual like uh cues of uh, how your training is performing and uh yeah it would show like if the loss is going down or not and also it would show uh audio examples of how the reconstruction is doing so basically it would, it would like uh output an audio of uh the original audio and the uh, output audio if you feed the original audio into the model and yeah and there's like some uh peculiar parameters that you might not understand for example uh, there's this uh, 0 0.95 percent manifold and this shows you how much like this actually shows you how much like data is stored in the latent variable so if you have like very low values like uh two uh that means there's like not much variety in the data set and uh that kind of leads to uh something like a uh, dot bagpipe model And so you want the like 0.95% manifold to be like around like eight or six at least. If your model has like diverse sounds, then it might be a lot more because the model needs like a lot more information to reconstruct the audio. Right, so uh, that's about it for Rave. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can like ask. Oh, well, this might be relevant. Uh, that we had a QA. Uh yeah, if you so basically the question is if you if you would like to be able to handle more variety of sounds in the autoencoder, how you, would you deal with that? Right. So increasing the latent vector dimensions might be a good idea, but uh yeah, it's very yeah as you mentioned it might be very hard to solve in that sense because uh for example models like uh rave and ddsp they they only handle just a single instrument or a single like domain and if you have like multiple domains like uh say you you train a single model on both like piano and uh drum sounds and all that that makes the problem like uh a lot more difficult in general and ideally like the latent vector holds like information for both domains but uh uh generally it doesn't go that simple but yeah like i guess yeah latent vectors and also uh since the wave is a vae uh the VAE VA has like a KL uh VAE has a KL divergence term that sort of uh restricts the information that's stored in the latent variable and uh you might you can like edit that in the wave wave settings oh yeah the slides should be shared later yes I mean at least for me yeah uh yeah so i guess like this prior is uh not the number of latent variables and this yeah regularization strength uh you might want to look into that because uh i think the stronger this is uh the less data you can store in the in the latent variable so you might want to turn that down if you if you want to handle more variety of sounds but it's it's definitely a trade-off of like uh quality and uh, diversity yeah, yeah 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 you mentioned that in the like, second half of the comment but yeah thanks for the comment so yeah it's generally a bit difficult to handle like uh, uh diverse sort of sounds because yeah the model is the model has a limited capacity 
Okay, so I'll, I'll just go into uh, DDSP. I mean, I think uh, you might already be aware of DDSP. I think like Google and uh, some other companies have like announced like DDSP plugins already, but uh, Newton also has a DDSP. And uh, yeah, so let me just explain the DDSP model. Uh, DDSP is also an autoencoder model with like pitch and loudness encoder. Uh, it does an option to use like uh, linear variables, but uh, we don't support that right now, as with like other DSP plugins. But uh, yeah, and what's different about DDSP is that it utilizes the harmonic structure in the musical sounds. So uh, the decoder outputs parameters for a uh, additive synthesizer and a uh, noise synthesizer, and then it then like both outputs are added together and reverb is added to synthesize the audio so yeah uh ddsp the pros of ddsp is that it follows pitch and it needs the data and it's also less a lot less expensive to train like it, you only need like a few hours to train it but the cons are that it's limited to monophonic and uh, harmonic instruments. So basically, you can you can train on like uh, wind instruments like uh, flute, trumpet, saxophones. But uh, if yeah, if you have like piano performances, like multiple keys would be played at like the same time, and that would cause problems. And also, drums are percussive, and they don't really have a notion of pitch, and that would be a uh, trouble. And yeah, and also like for like songs with like multiple instruments that wouldn't work out either. Uh, so here's an example of like a, a DDSP timbre transfer. We have an original in the saxophone. Wait, wait, let me just, okay. And this is like how it is when converted to a shakuhachi. Right, I think it sounds pretty good. And there's some reverb added because like the training data had a lot of reverb. Okay, so uh, DDS, the DSP collab notebook is basically the same as a uh, rave. A collab notebook. I mean, you can check the GPU, you can mount the drive, and yeah, you yeah, have some training configurations. So, yeah, training configurations is uh, there's something you might want to look out for, like this uh, original F0 minimum and original F0 max. Uh, you, you want to set that to like uh, depending on your data set. So if your data set has like lots of high sounds and not, not much else, you want to set the minimum to high value and the max to high value to like reflect the, the pitch range of your training data. Yeah, and there's some, uh, yeah, just pre-processing steps. And then yeah, and this uh this training cell and uh it's a bit different, but uh yeah, there's some uh you have to run this cell for resuming training if your training got cut off. And then yeah, you can like export your model pretty easily, and then you can like download your model and use that in Newton. Yeah. So it's very simple. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, so, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, about the DDSP training data, as we mentioned, uh, you have to uh, prepare a data set of monophonic sounds with single instrument and hopefully cover like a wide range of pitch. That would be nice, but uh, it doesn't have to, like, your model would only work in like some range of pitch. If that's fine, then you don't have to prepare that sort of data. And also, 
yeah, background noise is not very good. And uh, generally, you need like a lot less data than Rave, at least. It's about like 30 minutes is fine. Like maybe less is fine, actually. Right, so uh, we we went over like uh, Rave and DDSP models, but uh, I think like some of you might like uh, have like your own secret neural network models that you want to try out in Newtone. And one thing you want to look out for is, uh, I mean, it's it's Newtone is like a general wrapper around like neural networks, so it works with any type of uh, neural ne uh, neural audio effect. At least if, as long as it's like written in PyTorch and converted to Torch script. And also, if yeah, you'd have to like process audio buffer by buffer. So, yeah, like the input is like a Torch.tensor audio, and the output is the same Torch.tensor out output audio. And yeah, it, you don't have to worry about like sampling rate and buffer size too much because uh, Newton has Newton takes care of that for you. And uh, one caveat is that uh, your this uh, neural network must be fast enough to run in real time, and also convolution requires some care when handling buffers. And let me go into the details about that. But uh, so models with like normal convolution over waveform don't work in like real time audio effects because unnecessary zero padding is added every buffer. So and let me just uh, go into the graphics. So if you have like a non-streaming convolution, then uh, so these are the buffers. And uh, this is a second buffer. So if you have non-streaming, like standard convolution, then the convolution kernel goes like to, yeah, like has a stride and just process audio like this and like conv convolves over the input buffer. And for the second buffer, uh, padding is applied and then it convolves over the second buffer. So you get like this sort of output. But uh, when you consider that this buffer was meant to be like a contiguous, like cons cons consecutive sort of audio that, that's meant to be connected, uh, this zero padding is like not, it actually breaks the audio output. So we have to uh, use a different type of convolution called streaming convolution that sort of uh, replaces the cache. I mean, it replaces the padding with the cache from like the last buffer. So if you, if you do that, then like uh, the sort of continuous nature of buffers will be preserved. And you, and you like uh, calculate the right values for the uh, up convol convolution. So yeah, uh, yeah. So streaming com compatible com convolution has to re replace zero padding with samples from the previous content. So uh, I think Bogdan also mentioned this, but uh, 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 an example of uh, this streaming convolution is available on the Newton SDK examples. And uh, you don't have to worry about all this like during training or like before training. You just have to like after training, you have to uh, swap the convolution layers with uh, this sort of streaming compatible convolution and copy the weights for the convolution over to this new new streaming convolution layer. Right, so uh, I went, uh, this is like the conclusion. Uh, I went, so with Newton, you can like uh, train, I mean, use, I mean, you can just load your audio effects from the browser in the plugin and use them in your actual DAW to like actually make music. And also you can train your own timbre transfer models, like for example, Rave and DDSP. And, also, you can like test new new neural audio effects that you have uh, you have written in PyTorch. 
yeah uh if you have any questions or like uh comments or anything uh i'd like i'd love to just uh i'd love for you to join our discord for new tone uh it's in like the cosmo uh website and all that i mean the cosmo new tone website but yeah uh let me just uh, did did we post the link to the the wave and the TDSP collab notebooks? Okay, yeah, thanks. Right, uh, we still have some time left, but uh, that's about it for me. Uh, thanks very much. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, Take, are you got are you got any more to add to that or is that is that you finished there? Uh let me just add about uh, some com questions. Uh yeah, so one person asked uh what would be the limitations of Tamba transfer models? And yeah, and that's something that's been looked look like uh overlooked. Uh like as to like what Tamba transfer even should be. That's kind of an undefined problem. Like there's no like correct way to do a Tamba transfer effect. And and I think it's all experimentation, but like uh yeah, like so if you train like a Tamba transfer wave model on like uh a lots of ver variety of data set, it's not going to really like Tamba transfer to anything because like if your if your training data contains like every sorts of sounds that you you can possibly imagine, then uh, then like there wouldn't be any tumble transfer at all. Like the model would find like the original input style and like reconstructing the original input style and like no no basically no tumble transfer would be formed. So I think the model has to have like a specific definite style that you want to like uh transfer to in a sense yeah i mean i think like uh i'd love for people at aimc to like explore that sort of field like what what you can actually accomplish with this new type of effects <laughs>